Hey, JP here. We've had a breakthrough in our Magneto Hydrodynamic Plasma Engine program. I want to tell you all about it and then show you some of the test firings and some of the results. It all has to do with this little part. It's an ablative graphene electrode. Magneto Hydrodynamics, or MHD, is just one part of our plasma engine program. These are the engines we will be installing in our airships as part of the Airship to Orbit program. For the big picture description of that program, check out the Airship to Orbit video. I put a link to it in the description below. Back to the engine. One of the most important parts of these engines are the electrodes. They are used in pairs. The electrodes are inside the engine and exposed to the plasma and the engine exhaust. The electrodes either pull electrical power out of the engine or are used to pump it in depending on the mode the engine is in. For a good explanation of magnetohydrodynamics, check out the MHD Firing 117 video. The link to it is also in the description below. There is one big problem that has plagued MHD systems since their invention. The electrodes get fouled. All that gunk from the engine gets on them, and worse, at the operating temperatures inside the engine, the metal of the electrodes reacts with the engine products and creates a hard crust on the electrodes. The upshot of all this is the electricity doesn't flow through the electrodes as well. It's kind of like when you've left batteries in a flashlight too long and they get that crud on all the connections and the flashlight stops working. This is a copper electrode after a firing. Some of it flakes off, but most of it has to be ground off. Here in this chart, you can see the power drop-off. It is caused directly by the fouling of the electrodes. The problem is, you can't get in there with a wire brush and clean it while the motor's running. That's what our breakthrough is. We have found a solution to the fouling problem, and it works. Electrodes that melt. I know it sounds like a terrible idea, but follow me here. You can use melting to take things away. That's what the heat shield on the Apollo space capsule used when re-entering the Earth's atmosphere. They would intentionally melt the surface. The melted material would be blown off by the atmosphere rushing by, carrying with it the heat. The process is called ablating, and it's exactly what the new electrodes are doing. These are 3D printed graphene electrodes. They are made from an electrically conductive material called graphene and PLA, a plant-based plastic used in 3D printers. The PLA melts easily and doesn't stand a chance against the high temperature inside the engine. Now the graphene electrode gets gunk on it too. However, the engine rapidly melts the face. While it's melting, the engine exhaust blows off the outer surface, exposing fresh conductive graphene below. We just continuously feed it in while the engine is running. At least, that's the idea. The first time we tried it, we didn't have a feeder system just the graphene electrodes in place of the copper ones. We wanted to see if it worked at all before we built a unit with the electrode feeder. I need to ask a favor. It's time to hit that subscribe button. It really does help keep us in the air and helps keep the videos coming. Have you done it yet? It's right there on the screen. Okay, let's get back to it. Here is the firing of the graphene electrodes it was done on MHD firing number 121. The initial performance of the graphene electrodes 
was slightly lower than the copper ones, about 10% lower. However, after the first quarter second, when the copper electrodes would foul and the current stops, the ablative electrodes continued to be conductive all the way through the three second run. It worked. This is what the electrode looked like afterwards. About three millimeters of the electrode ablated off during the three second run. Initially, it looks like we'll need to feed the electrodes in at about one millimeter per second. How we'll do that is we'll actually just print gears right on the electrodes. And then we'll use a little servo like this one with a gear on top to feed it into the unit. We've now done seven firings with the graphene electrodes. These were a combination of validation tests and testing with external potassium seeding. This is where we inject potassium into the engine to increase ionization. In all cases, we got improved performance with the graphene. Here's a look at those tests. Graphene confirmation test with a magnet modification. A control firing with copper electrodes. Graphene firing with external potassium and water solution seeding. Copper control firing with potassium and water solution seeding. Graphene control firing with a water seeding system, but no potassium. In the last test we did, we wanted to see if making the face of the electrode smaller would increase performance. We had seen an MHD study done in Japan suggesting that that was a possibility. We were pretty sure we had optimized already, but the data in the study was compelling enough to have us check it out. This test shows one of the advantages of 3D printing the electrodes. We can quickly try new shapes of the electrodes. Copper electrodes need to be machined. The 3D printed electrodes, you think about it, draw it, print it, and you're ready to test. On test number 127, we printed a pair of electrodes with the face one half the size of our standard ones. This is what those electrodes look like. And this is the test firing. Firing now. Get firing now. We actually saw significantly diminished performance with the smaller facing electrodes. So we're sticking with the 12 millimeter facing for now. What's next for the MHD program? We're combining two separate lines of research of the program together. The MHD unit with the paraffin acrylic potassium cores. This is a clip from core test number seven. One of the challenges in doing this is keeping the MHD unit from melting. Right now, we run the engines from one to three seconds. With the new cores on them, they'll be running for up to three minutes. The glass channels we use will be a bubbly mess by then. Normally, machined ceramics is used by the industry for these type of tests. But that's expensive, time consuming, and we tend to do a lot of tests. We needed to find a JP Aerospace way of doing it. Our solution? Cement channel blocks. We print the molds on a 3D printer, pour in the cement, and a few days later, they're done. They're pretty tough, can take high temperature, and they're easy to make changes with. You just reprint the mold. We'll be doing the first of the MHD with core block firings in about a month. I expect there to be about 10 firings in the series. Before that, we're going to do some initial short firings with the cement channels just to calibrate the new configuration. With each ignition, another step forward. Till next time, I'll leave you with one of the vehicles that this engine is going to drive. The Trans Atmospheric Ascender. Thank you for watching.